All right. Hey. Hello, Vic. Uh, yes, it's time for another uh, preview and prediction video. And uh, this time we're going to do the uh, Texas Longhorns and do have my, and I do have my good buddy, uh, Homegrown Cowboy, here with us to talk about some uh, Texas football. So There you go. How you doing, Vic? Good to be here. Um, good to see you again. And we're going to do the best we can with this right here. So here we go. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, the Longhorns, uh, they're, they're, they're progressing. They're not regressing. And uh, I think a lot of that has to do with Sarkeesian and uh, some of the draft picks or the, the um, uh, recruits that he has gotten, you know, within the past couple of years. So um, with that said, um, Quinn Ewers, he is the starter. They tried, you know, the fans of, uh, within the Longhorn community wanted to start a co quarterback controversy with Malik Murphy and Quinn. Um, but, you know, Quinn Ewers, he was supposed to be a, a senior last year in high school. And you have Malik Murphy, who, he, he, you know, had a hard time staying healthy. He had a moped accident, this, that, and the other, and he blew his chance. He was supposed to be the starter last year. So, but this year he is number two, and we're going to follow along see how that happens. If Ewers can stay healthy, Malik will come in. And yeah, then what about uh, Arch Manning? Arch Manning, he is the third string. He's going to be redshirted this year. And that doesn't mean he's not going to uh, see any playing time because I'm sure he'll he'll get his little fair share of the four games that, um, you know, he, he's expecting to see. So, um, but that, that scenario is going to have to play out by itself from what I understand. And um, Arch, it's I'm, I'm assuming it's expected that he will start next year. Provided that everything goes right. So, um, and not only Arch Manning, there's other guys in, in line that, um, uh, you know, they're, they're waiting too, and they're very good quarterbacks. We've got Owens out of Houston that we have recruited this year, um, and also uh, K.J. Lang from Alabama. You know, he, he's really good. So, we're, we're, we're better off than we've been in a long time as far as building up our – recruits as far as I'm concerned. Everybody always talks about how we've always been like top five uh, in recruiting, but we just can't win. And that, I mean, it's a valid point. So um, with that said, um, Sarkeesian coming from Alabama and Bo Davis, uh, you know, some of the other guys <clears throat> were really, it's really starting to come together. And I think this year, I'm not saying we're gonna we're, we're, you know, we're gonna be undefeated or anything, but it's 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 looking better. I think we can do better than eight and four this year. Yeah, I know that uh, that a lot of people are picking y'all to to uh, win the uh, the Big Twelve. So, well, it, that's kind of a tall order, but it's not. Um, you know, to to go to the Big Twelve, you're gonna have to be at least ten and two. And um, I mean, if if it, if if they can go undefeated. I, you know, so be it, but I, I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen, but if, um, if, if Texas makes it to the big 12, I, I'll be happy. A lot of Longhorn fans won't be happy. Yeah. And, um, and if you win the big 12, you're expected to go to the playoffs. So let's see how that one, you know, ends up. Yeah, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, Kansas state, won the Big 12 last year and didn't go to the playoffs. So Yeah, yeah, that's – but uh, TCU, they did end up going to the playoffs and they did not win, right? So, yeah, so, yeah, they won in the, uh, in, in the, uh, the first round, yeah. And then we all know what, what happened next. So. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was a demolish. Mm -hmm. So, but um, – I'm a, I don't have high expectations like that because I just don't like to set, set myself up for failure. And, you know, Texas Longhorns, you know, they've been well known throughout the decades of their football program, much like, you know, Ohio State and uh, Notre Dame or, you know, a lot of the right. SEC school. All right. It's time to take a look at some things here. So I guess I got my uh, screen share. I guess first we can uh, start by looking at uh, 
schedule uh, from last year. Y'all did start out. Y'all absolutely obliterated uh, ULM. Uh, mm -hmm. And then next, y'all, and the next, uh, you lost to uh, Alabama by yep. one point. Yeah, no, not for uh, Quinn Ewers uh, getting hurt. Yeah. Pro probably would probably would have won but yeah that's when dallas turner knocked him out of the game and that that really set us back for the rest of the year yep. and then you got uh utsa uh yeah y'all blew them out and then lost to uh texas tech in overtime yeah that was a huge disappointment oh and then we had uh and then and then y'all you could see y'all blew out West Virginia, and then look at that, y'all just absolutely uh, annihilated uh, Oklahoma. Yeah, forty nine to nothing. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I think that was more of Oklahoma being so bad than Texas being so good. To be honest with you. Yep. And then we got, and then they lost to Oklahoma State, mm -hmm. and then uh, beat Kansas State. And then lost TCU, and then you uh, you um, destroyed Kansas, and then you beat uh, Baylor, and then for losing to uh, Washington in the Valero Alamo Bowl. Yeah, I was. That Washington game was kind of a shocker. I figured we'd do a lot better than that, but we didn't. Yep. All right. So now let's look at some uh, player stats here. Do you have um, ESPN? Pull it up. So you'll start with quarterbacks. Got to start out with Quinn Ewers. He had uh, 2,177 yards. Now he was hurt a lot last year. He missed, what, like four games? Yeah, it was uh, three or four games. Yeah. Yeah, Hudson and Card then, came in. It's a 58.1% of his passes, uh, 7.4 yards per attempt. Obviously, you'd like to. Uh, see that go up a little bit and Definitely. then you've got uh you got 15 touchdowns to six interceptions so it seems like uh like all of the uh hope of texas is resting on on quinn ewers you know you know you know we're hoping he's gonna you know take a big step forward in his uh sophomore year so yeah <clears throat> there are high expectations for him to uh do very well this year, and I've, I've heard his name being brought up as a possible Heisman candidate, and we'll see, but he's got to prove it on the field, of course, yeah. and stay healthy. Yeah, and then, and then Hudson Card uh, had 728 yards, but I think he uh, he transferred, though, right? Yeah, Hudson Card went to, uh, was an Iowa, or, I cannot remember, but he did transfer. And then he's yeah. with 69.4 percent and uh 8.6 yards per attempt, which were both better than yours. He had six touchdowns to one interception, so but he's gone, like we just said. So, mm -hmm. and now just the uh Momo running back said so you are losing B. B. John Robinson, yep, the great almighty B. John. That's right, B. John is now. A falcon, that's right. Mm -hmm. so sure six, is. Six foot, 220 pounds. The thing that made, made B. John Robinson so good was his vision and his, you know, instinct as, as being a ball runner. Yep. And he, he's every bit a legitimate first-round pick. Yep, 258 yards, 1,000 – oh, excuse me, 258 carries, 1,580 yards. 6.1 uh, yards per carry and 18 touchdowns. And he also had um, receiving stats, too. He was 19 catches, 314 yards, 16.5 per catch, and two touchdowns. Longest mm -hmm. catch was 42 yards. Longest run was 78 yards. So, yeah, obviously losing uh, um, a lot with him gone. So. And he also lost uh, Roshan uh, Johnson, got drafted by the uh, the Bears. So, yep, yeah, that was um, <clears throat> that. Anytime you have a running back like Bijan Johnson, you know, uh, Robinson, 
Um, you, I mean, you're gonna you, you're gonna miss it, you know, and you got to try to fill that that hole. So I think that we have some good some good backups this year. But go ahead. Yeah, I think that uh, yeah, obviously losing Bijan and you know, and you know Roshan's mm -hmm. obviously you know you know big losses in the uh, running back room for Roshan. Yet. 93 carries, 554 yards, 6 yards per carry, and 5 uh, touchdowns. But it looks like you do bring back um, Jonathan Brooks mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Ke Ke Keelan Robinson. So mm -hmm. Keelan Robinson will be our kick returner. <clears throat> and uh, and um, Jaden Blue. So. Jaden Blue is very good as well. Yeah, a lot of these uh, these, these are, are really um, smaller uh, r running backs, though. Y'all don't have mm -hmm. a uh, have a big, you know, bruising back like Bijan or Roshan. So, I think um, the freshman C.J. Baxter. I think he's probably our biggest one, and um, he's a five star that we got last year. Uh, or. Now, wait a minute, C.J. Baxter's, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's probably our biggest. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, so see, so see a uh, freshman this year. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay, and now let's take a look at wide receivers. Do bring back Xavier Worthy and Jordan Whittington, right? Yep. Yeah, Whittington, um, <clears throat> he, he was very productive for us last year, but uh, Worthy was kind of off and on uh, at Nair. We really missed him because he came from he came in as a transfer from Wyoming, and uh, he got injured in, you know, during the preseason. So that, that really hurt us. But, you know, we're going we're, we're gonna to go on with Nair. <laughs> and that's uh, Momo Worthy is the uh, – uh... Is the the speedster? He had six hundred carries, seven hundred sixty yards, nine touchdowns, twelve point seven uh, per catch. And then for Whittington, fifty catches, six fifty two yards, thirteen per catch, and one touchdown. So, yeah, yeah, really a lack of uh, touchdowns for all those yards. Yeah, yeah, he, he's pretty much a go to guy to, to get somebody else in the end zone. And then what about uh? uh J Jatavion Sanders. Jatavion Sanders. He is a very good tight end. Um, once he, once he's got very good hands, and once he catches the ball, he can run. Now he's a former wide receiver turned tight end, is what he is. So they put him at tight end because he'd be just an, he, he's another weapon at that position. But not only that, he can block. He's so. at six four, two forty nine mm -hmm. pounds. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and then he's got 54 catches, 613 yards, and five touchdowns, 11.4 per catch. Yeah, so is, there, so is there anyone else in the uh, passing game that we should uh, keep an eye on? Yeah, we've got, um, I see, I brought up uh, Nair. Um, John Tay Cook, he's, he's, the, uh, he's a freshman this year, and he's going to see some playing time. But if anything happens, with the wide receiving core, which I consider probably one of the best this year. Um, I, I think that he would probably come in if somebody got hurt. We have depth. So watch out for John Tay Cook, five-star. Okay. Yeah, so the uh, so the uh, offense looks really good. Mm -hmm. uh, I did have uh, 34.5 uh, uh, points per game. I think that, I think that will improve uh, this year, but – and then uh thirty eight uh percent on on third down. Yeah, 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 I think that'll be better. Mm -hmm. uh, and only uh seven point seven uh yards per yards per pass. You like to uh see see that go up. Yeah, running yeah. game was really good. Uh five point two yards per carry. So Well we're hoping that th this year, you know, with our uh crop of receivers with the addition of A.D. Mitchell from your, formerly your school, um, hoping that um, these guys will stretch the field out and open more opportunity for the running game. 
Oh, yes, right. You can't and forget I, uh, um, A.D. Mitchell. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, I, yeah, I forgot that he had gone to uh, Texas. Yeah. That's right. Um, yep. We expect, you know, big things from him. Yep. Okay. So now I guess we can talk about uh, the uh, defense now. I mean, let's talk about special teams next. So mm -hmm. y'all do bring back your kicker, uh, Burt Auburn. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was kicking uh, um, eighty percent of his field goals. So. Yeah, he <clears throat> he wasn't exceptional, exceptional, but he was pretty steady. Yeah, yeah, yep. So yeah, what about your uh, your punter? Who's your uh, uh, your uh, your punter gonna be? Well, he's I believe he's a new guy from uh, I, I think he came from Australia. And um, <laughs> oh, yeah, you got one of those Australians. Yeah, I think he's a transfer from uh, the school. I cannot remember, and I cannot remember his name, but um, he is a transfer, and he can boom it. So yeah, was it? Uh, was it? Is it? Um, Isaac Peterson. Mm, yeah, yeah, because that's who I, I see right think, here. I yeah. think I think or, that is or the, Isaac Pearson. I mean, because he's from Newcastle. Uh, in NSW. So. That's it. That's him. Yeah. yeah. So he he's our, he's going to be our guy. Yeah. Yep. Don't know much about him, but he's going to be out there. <laughs> yeah. Usually, usually those Australian punters are usually pretty good. So I I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, we got one at Georgia and uh, Brett Thorson. So yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So let's talk about. The, uh, who you're bringing back? It's like you lost uh, uh, to Demarvion. Overshone is now with the uh, uh, mm -hmm. the Cowboys, but y'all do bring back um, Jalen Ford. So. That's a huge plus having Jalen Ford come back. Yeah, Jalen yeah. Ford, yeah, he got 119 total tackles, yep, four interceptions, yep, two two forced fumbles and two fumble recoveries, two sacks. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he really pulled through us last for us last year. He, yeah. he should be a second round pick next year. Yep, but then y'all do lose the uh, ninety five tackles and four sacks from Demarvion Overshone. So yeah, and Overshone was a converted safety, converted linebacker. He used to play safety. Yep. Yes, yeah, so that's it. to talk about the uh, DBs. So y'all bring back Jaron Thompson. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, J and uh, Jade uh, Baron, but it looks like y'all uh, losing Anthony Cook is to the Chiefs. So, mm -hmm. I wasn't overly all impressed with our defensive back last year, but they, you know, they 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 were okay, nothing special. Yep. Yep, we have the good. addition of um, let's see, we got two transfers, um, Gavin Holmes from. Wake Forest, uh, he is a very solid cornerback. And the other one we got is uh, Catalan from Arkansas. Oh, yeah, now, yeah, I've heard of him, yeah. Yeah, so those are two huge uh, additions to the team. Um, you know, the Catalan, if you ever watched the video, the tape on him, I mean, he absolutely likes to lay the wood. And he causes um, – you know, turnovers, which is what we really lacked on defense last year, whether if it was the defensive backs or the defensive line. I think our defensive line was more of a uh, problem than the defensive backs, but, yep. you know. It, yep, and speaking of the uh, the uh, defensive line, it's like uh, Tavondre Sweat does return mm -hmm. to 6'4", yeah, 340 pounds, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a big man. Yep. He's going to be playing yeah. alongside of Murphy, I believe. Yep, yeah, because it looks like uh, Keandre uh, Coburn has gone to the Chiefs. So he was also another big guy. Four, mm -hmm. 343 pounds. So mm -hmm. um, We were good run stoppers, but we, ju we just couldn't get the pass rush go down. I mean, we, we, you know, we get close to the quarterback, but we just couldn't get in there long enough to make, you know, to cause turnovers. That's yeah, that's there's, uh, yeah, and there's a uh, Byron Murphy, six one, three hundred nine pounds, so not mm -hmm. quite as big as uh, as uh, Momo Coburn, but 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're hoping that he, can, he has enough speed to get to the quarterback. And then, of course, your uh, defensive end, so you'll have to lose uh, Moro. Uh, Ojomo is now with the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a good right, run so stopper, not not a real big pass rusher. So y'all do bring back uh, O.V. Okofu and mm-hmm. uh, what's the other one, uh, Baron. Baron Sorrell, Sorrell yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, from what I understand, Sorrell is going to be lined up on the left side, and he is looking better to you know get into the quarterback. I think the coaches have been working on his uh, technique and everything. On the right side is going to be Ethan Burke, which is Ethan pretty. Burke. You know, I think uh, th- this is his first year starting. I mean, he should he should be the starter. Come the first game against Rice. Yeah, who who, who are we talking about? So I don't Ethan, is I don't see. He, oh, Ethan Burke, there he is. I see him now. Mm-hmm. Okay, there he is. Yeah, I guess he was a uh, freshman last year. Yeah. Yep. So I guess you think he's going to get get a lot more playing time this year. Yeah. Yes, and I think that he will get to the quarterback better than what we did last year. So, and that was, that was a good pickup last year getting him. And one of the biggest surprises that we're, we're probably going to see is uh, freshman – Linebacker Anthony Hill. Okay, he is he's a five star star athlete coming out of uh, Denton, and they say he's every bit of what he's uh, been, you know, what, what we've been hearing about. And the guy's fast. He, he, you know, he hits. He's a great run stopper, and they they say that he is the real deal. And he's probably going to be starting next to uh, Jalen Ford. So Anyways, keep, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so now, uh, yeah, it looks like the defense gave up uh, 21 point, uh, point six, uh, point points per game. So, yeah, and that had to, that had to, to do with a lot of, I mean, from front to back on defense. The defense wasn't incredibly great last year, but you know, it's uh, um, it, it's improved with the transfers and some of the seniors coming back and. Some new young blood up front. You know, we, we should be better this year. Yeah, it's a lot it's a lot better than it was in uh in uh twenty twenty one in Sark's oh, first yeah. year. So Oh yeah. You know, he cut he cut forty players off that team. You don't hear about it, but he did. Oh yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I think I do remember uh hear, mm-hmm. hearing about that. Yeah. How it kinda did what, you know. Dion did at Colorado. Yeah, <laughs> but, it, but it wasn't, but it wasn't, wasn't, what, but it wasn't the entire team. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's, yes, that was good for uh, for a twenty eighth in mm-hmm. scoring defense. Uh, let's see where y'all ranked in score in a uh, scoring offense. Let's see. Yeah, yeah we're twenty fifth in in. In points per game, thirty four point five. Yeah, see, we, we 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 can improve there. Definitely need to. And then let's look at uh, t- total D. Total defense. I think total defense isn't very good. <laughs> nope. Yeah, they're not. Looks like looks like they're not on the first page. Let's yeah, I mean page, page two. Here they are, fifty fourth, three hundred sixty eight point four points per uh, yards per game. Yeah, that's unacceptable. <laughs> now let's find total offense. Total offense. Here it is, thirty fifth, four hundred twenty nine point five uh, yards per game. 25th. Yep. Let's see as we look at uh, thir- third downs. That third down conversion shouldn't be that well. 
Shouldn't be yeah, that good. Third, yeah, third down, probably not that good. I'm still there. We go 73rd on third down. Yeah, with, that's uh, with 38.8 percent. Wow, that is horrible. And that a lot of that had to do with um, Quinn Ewers being gone. I don't think Card was in there, so. Yeah, if we um, if we could do more on the um, the running game as far as uh, you know blocking the quarterback, this, that, and the other, protecting the quarterback, you know that that's got to be one of the priorities going into this year. So, with Kevin Banks at left tackle, has his blind side, and he he should be protected. All right, so we can look at uh at, pen at penalties per game. Uh, here it is, our sixty sixth, uh, tied for sixty six in penalties. Yeah, six penalties uh, per game. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. yeah, that's not too bad. But and then. Let's see as we look at uh, rushing defense and rushing offense uh, against the run, thirty third, uh, one twenty five point <clears throat> seven rush yards per game um, allowed. Offensive line has definitely improved over the past couple of years, and it's it, it looks like it's getting better. Yep, the offense, yeah, one hundred eighty eight. Point two uh, uh, per game, uh, five point two uh, per carry. That was thirty sixth. So mm -hmm. again, it could it could get better. <laughs> and then we'll look at. Uh, uh, I guess we we'll look at passing yards allowed. This is not going to be good. Yeah, the pass defense not as not as good as the run defense. Right. <clears throat> still, yeah, I'm still. Yeah, here we go. Not the ninety first uh, per game. Only okay, two earned yeah, forty two point seven pass yards per game. Yep, six point six point three, but but only six point three per attempt. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when Sarkeesian went out and got Catalong and uh, Gavin Holmes. So that, you know, he wants some experience back there. And we'll look at passing offense next. And oh. then yeah, and then we'll move on to the uh, uh, schedule. Okay. Here they are, 56. 56. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. We'll. Uh, yeah. Okay. Pa passing game at two forty one point four um, yards per game. I think that 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 will improve. Yeah, I think that you'll probably have to uh, to. Uh, Yeah, they got a lot of improvement to do. There's no doubt about that. I, and if I were to say what the Texas biggest improvement is, it's, it's, it's going to be on the defense. <clears throat> okay, so you're ready to uh, take a look at that schedule now. It's time to mm -hmm. pick the game. Let's so, do it. here we go. We start out week one um, against Rice, right? That yeah, that should be an easy mm -hmm. win, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So just a yeah, little warm up game uh, to start out, and then and then next uh, the big game uh, at Alabama. That's going to be a big one. Yep, at Alabama. 
Now, <clears throat> Quinn Ewers is going to remember who knocked him out of the game last year, and that's Dallas Turner. He's going to remember that. And um, I think that Dallas is going to go in there with some vengeance. I don't think that te uh, Texas is going to want to lose twice in the uh, uh, two years in a row. So I think Sarkeesian, you know, he, he – He's a former coach at Alabama, and I, I'd like to know if, if they're still running his plays or if they're going under, uh, you know, another system here. But he knows Alabama, and that's the reason why he played them so well is because he knew exactly what was going on. Now, since what Ewers got hurt, that's the big question. Could they have beat them? Could Texas have won that game against Alabama? We don't know because he, you know, for the obvious reasons. So <clears throat> I'm expecting um, I'm expecting Milrow to be playing, and Texas doesn't want Jalen Milrow to start because he reminds them a lot of Vince Young, and maybe some of Michael Vick or you know something on that line. He's not very accurate with his throws. He can throw the long ball, but do not let him run. Use his legs. <laughs> do not let him run. So now if the other quarterback that transferred in comes in, Texas is going to be much happier. So it's going to get real interesting. I would imagine I like I just wonder if that's probably going to be the the game of the week right there. Yep. Yes, you mean uh Momo Buckner, yeah, the new quarterback for Alabama. Correct, Buckner. Yeah, I guess they're gonna be running uh Tommy Rees plays uh um now, yeah. And I think let's not get get carried away with comparing Jalen Milrow to Vince Young or Michael Vick. I think that's a bit. <laughs> well, back in high school, he proved every bit of it. And Jalen Milrow's from the same area as Vince Young, too. By the way. Yep. Yes. Who do you think? Who, who do you think's gonna, gonna win though? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that Texas gets their revenge this game. And I think uh, by a couple of points, I don't think it's going to be anything huge. <laughs> but I think they squeak one by. Um, I know that they're going to try and go after yours once again, get yep. them out of the game. But yep. I'm expecting them to um, to win this game by a couple of points. Yeah, so yeah, so I already uh, did did my Alabama preview, and I did pick Alabama uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to win this game. It's because of the uh, – uh, the home field and, you know, how much time, you mm -hmm. know, Saban has to prepare his team uh, for this game. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think it'll be, it'll be close though. I, th I think it will be a good game like last year, but anyway, so the next up you've got uh, Wyoming and uh, that should be an easy win. Yeah. And then uh, next up you are um, at Baylor, your first uh, conference mm -hmm. game. Yeah, I see us winning that game. I think Dave, Dave Aranda is going to have his guys pumped up for it, but I, I don't think it's going to be enough to beat Texas. Right. So I, well, I, that's, that's a win for Texas. Right. Well, um, yeah, I think that uh, that uh, the Texas may end up um, 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 overlooking uh, Baylor a little bit. So I'm mm -hmm. actually going to uh, uh, um, um, pick this one as my um, upset pick. So, yeah, okay. yeah I, think this, I think this will be a loss. Start out two and two, but, you know, don't worry. it gets it, It's going to get better. Next, you've got Kansas. Yeah, they mm -hmm. were a, a, a great story uh, last year, but, you know, but, you know, given what y'all, you know, did to them last year, 55 to 14. Yeah, I don't see. Yeah, I don't see y'all losing this one. So that was that was a revenge win from them beating us the previous year in two thousand. Oh, yeah. That's what oh, that yeah, was. That's right. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, we never heard the end of that one either. <laughs> that was ugly. That was bad. So we got. Uh, I've got them winning that game, of course, and see who's our next one here. I can't see the screen that well, Vic. Oklahoma Sooners. Yeah. Let 
Vic, we've lost audio here. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that in uh, in uh, 2015, uh, this uh, moment of losing to Kansas is what got uh, Charlie Strong fired. So, mm -hmm. all right, yes, that's good. Yes, yeah, so so my mic sometimes mutes itself. It does mute, you know. Just just you know, let me know. Uh, mm -hmm. But anyway, next up, you've got um, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, one of the big rivals in the country right here. And um, they're not going to be – they're definitely going to want some revenge, but I just don't think they have the horsepower to do it. So I'm going to take Texas in this win here as well. I think Texas is going to pull two in a row. I might cut out again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I cut out. <laughs> now I got to start over. I was saying that uh, that it's going to be tough for Houston in their first year uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the uh, uh, the Big 12, that they're probably going to be the worst of the four new teams. So I think this should be an easy win. It should be. Although they are rebuilding a, under a new system, they, and they're getting some good recruits, but it's going to take some time. Look out for Houston later on. Yep. And then uh, next up, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Houston uh, used to be good, so. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Back when they had, who was it? Um, 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 Andre Ware. That, uh, Andre used Ware. To play for them, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's right. So now this part of the schedule right here has really got me worried. <clears throat> we got five straight get yeah, we got five straight games that are that are tough. I mean, we could lose any of those games. So but, BYU, Kansas State, and at and at TCU and then at Iowa State and Texas Tech. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's two games out of here that we're gonna lose. Hmm. And I'm going to say, I mean, I'll tell you, I like Will Howard of Kansas State a lot, and their head coach is good. Um, I'm going to say we're probably going to lose one to um, Kansas State and uh, Iowa State since it's at Iowa State. Yeah, since, it, since it, it's in Ames, Iowa, yeah. Yeah, so that right there is, is my two – my two picks that we're going to lose. Now, TCU, you know, if they didn't lose so much, you know, um, Sonny Dykes, you can't count them out because you <laughs> you never know with that guy. But um, I just think that Texas has got, you know, too much talent on their team to, to lose the TCU this year. Yeah, I, th yeah, I think that so. TCU has lost too much to their, their quarterback. So, and they're – top mm -hmm. wide receiver at uh, Cornelius Johnson and then uh, TCU's – Quarterback, oh yeah, Max Duggan. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. gone. I think they had a running back that they lost. Yeah. They lost uh, Quentin some, Johnson. Yeah, yeah, they lost some uh, pieces on defense. So uh, yeah, yeah. I think they're, they're going to be ta taking a step back. So and yeah. then uh, and then uh, Kansas State. Yeah, they won the Big Twelve uh, last year. They're going to be good again mm -hmm. uh, this year too. And then and then, what do you think about um, BYU? BYU is a lot like um, Iowa State, in my opinion. We have not had good luck with BYU in the past. In fact, I can't even tell you the last time we beat them. That's how bad it is. Now, Texas doesn't want to roll out of the Big 12 with another loss to BYU. Um, I, think, I think that Texas is going – I think they're going to beat them this year. No, does that say is that is it at Texas or BYU? 
That is at Texas. Okay. Your mic went out again. Yeah. Vic, your mic. There you go. It is. Yeah, it is. Uh, um, um, at um in Texas. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So uh, yeah, and then what about um, um, um Texas Tech? Texas Tech, yes. Uh, Joey McGuire, the head coach, he's recruiting very well. Um, we we haven't had, you know, very good success with Texas Tech in the few, you know, past years. So I think we're going to get them this year. If we go into these five last – if we can go into the, the BYU game undefeated, then I think we'll have a good chance of going 10 and 2. Um, the rest of the season. All right. So, yeah, ten and two. Yeah, I think they're going uh, ten, ten and two as well. Except for I had my uh, two losses early in the season, and you have your two losses late in the season. So, and and we all know that when you lose at the end of the season, it's it's a lot worse than losing in the beginning of the season. Yep. So that yep. might hurt Texas. Yeah, I think that that losing in the beginning, you know, because you want to, you hope to uh, improve as the season, you know, yeah, um, goes along, so get them out of the way early, and then, you know, beat beat a bunch of teams. You'll you'll be ranked higher than if you lose at the end of the season. So, exactly. Yep. But anyway, it's also a guy with them uh, losing uh, at Alabama and at Baylor. And you have Texas losing to Kansas State and at Iowa State. So, yep. Yeah, and that in that uh, in that ten and two uh, should be enough to uh, get into the uh, Big Twelve championship. So, yeah, uh, the Sooner fans think that they're, they're gonna they're gonna make it to the Big Twelve. They think yeah. they're gonna do it this year. Yeah. If it is, if it is Texas and Oklahoma. It's going to be a barn burner. Yeah, prob yeah, yeah, probably will be uh, Oklahoma or maybe Kansas State, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying, well, Kansas State and Texas. Yep, yeah, well, yeah, we've been uh, let down by uh, Texas before, so hopefully uh, they yeah. can uh, get, get it done this year. I'm tired of being let down. Yeah, Texas is going to do it this uh, year. Yeah, it's been since um, 2009. So, Yep, that's correct. So that's pretty much it. We're going to yep. do the best we can and hope for the best and go Longhorns. Uh, yep, yep. And uh, so anyway, so there's, there you have it, guys. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you all again next time. Thank you, Vic.